In today's video, how quickly does muscle loss occur? And how quickly can we get that muscle back? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and right now it seems like a really good topic to discuss because all of our lives are really being disrupted by not only the gyms closing and the, the change in surrounding economic impact, but I think a lot of us are kind of feeling the stress of just being out of our normal routine. So I thought it was a great time to talk about how fast we can lose muscle and what we can do to kind of prevent or attenuate muscle loss. And then we'll even talk about how quickly we can regain that muscle. Cause I, I really want to help you guys be a little bit optimistic because even though we're going through this tough time, there are some, some good things we can discuss. And the first thing I want to discuss is basically the idea of detraining. If you've been going to the gym, if you've been training, if you've been an athlete for let's say a year or more, going to the gym four or five, six days a week, a lot of us get concerned that a disruption to our training is really going to lead to muscle loss. And for good reason, because it's very hard and we put in a lot of work to build that muscle. But I want to reference a study and I also want to talk a little bit about my personal experiences. So the study I'm going to reference below actually looked at athletes that we're training and how long it took them to detrain. And science shows us that if you don't train for as much as three weeks, you do not lose any muscle. And a lot of times people will say to me, well, but I notice muscle loss. But understanding the physiology of the body, when we're constantly training and we're constantly eating, we're constantly kind of in a state of inflammation, we also have a bit more glycogen storage and a bit more intramuscular fluid storage. So our muscles just have a fuller, bigger look. If you stop training, the body does not store as much glycogen, does not store as much water, and you lose some of that inflammation. Thus, cell swelling, muscle swelling can make it appear that you've lost muscle. But if you've been training for a while, well, guess what? You're not losing muscle, even if you do nothing bed rest for three weeks. But obviously that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is continue to get a stimulus. And there's a few things that we can do. Now I created a video the other day with, uh, with coach Kate from team pro physique, where we just went over a home gym workout for the lower body. If you had no weights, no access to anything, but anything you have access to can then be used to do things differently. If you've been used to a certain training style, simply changing the stimulus can really elicit a positive response. For example, time under tension. By really focusing on the eccentric portion of the lift, you can really change kind of how it's impacting your body. You can also do things like circuit training, time under tension added to things like drop sets, supersets, okay? You can do circuit style training. You can simply change the workouts that you're doing to match what you have. And in that same study, they talked about how building strength and per power can be done in two to four sessions per week per muscle group. So it's not as if we need to keep up the, the same exact style of training to continue to build or keep our muscle. Yes, it's going to be a disruption, but I think sometimes what's happening between our ears has more impact than what's actually happening to our bodies. We, we believe it to be so, and we make it worse. And the final thing I wanna talk about today is actually muscle memory or putting muscle back on. And I'm gonna link a study below that actually explains how the myonuclei that we build in our workouts over the course of months and years, and for some of us that are old like me, decades, those myonuclei are forever there. Even if we completely stop training for long periods of time, you're going to be able to put muscle back on very rapidly. I had an issue last year, and this is a little bit of anecdote, but I just want to give you an example. I had an issue at the end of 2018 where I really strained my shoulder. And to get that to go away, I had to stop doing all pressing movements, meaning no shoulder pressing, no bench pressing, no dumbbell pressing, no push-ups, no nothing. Because every time I did something, it would just come back worse. So after taking three months of no pressing, I noticed a severe lack of fullness in these muscle groups. Well, within a month, I actually hit a PR on dumbbell flat bench press, okay? Um, I've had to change the approach that I had. I had to really kind of correct my form, make sure things were being done properly. But I think that's where actually we can take a step back from our training and get better by looking at the things we're doing, taking the time if we're reducing weight and focusing more on, let's say, higher reps, time under tension, and really break down our form and get the most out of these movements. So a lot of times we look at these changes to our lives and we think, man, 
this is just not good, it's a negative. But if you look at these as opportunities to get better so that when our lives do return to normal, even if it's a new normal, we are better for it, okay? So just understand that muscle loss does not happen quickly. You can attenuate it just by staying active and continuing to train, even if it's not the same movements. Just get some stimulus to those muscle groups. And also, if there is any muscle loss or if there is any performance loss due to an interruption in your training, it's gonna come right back as soon as you return to that same training you were doing before. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. We at Pro Physique are hoping you guys are all safe, stay safe, stay vigilant, but stay positive. All right, guys, hopefully I'll talk to you very soon.